I've seen enough of this advice in my comment section as well as online in general that I have to address why the amount of vitamin D from foods is not significant and shouldn't really be mentioned in any sort of context where you're implying it's an acceptable sole source of this vitamin in someone's diet and lifestyle. There are a lot of raw primal dieters, Weston A. Price people, carnivore, who want to avoid supplements and keep things natural, when in reality, they're using that as an excuse to not put as much effort into their health and understand things from both the scientific and the experimental perspective. This is kind of similar to those raw vegans that think their diet is so pure. It's not too far off from that mentality. The main reason is that the amount of vitamin D specific to any food, even the foods highest in vitamin D, is not comparable to the sun. It's not even close. We're talking hundreds of IU in foods versus tens of thousands for minutes in the sun. One hour in the sun will get you more vitamin D than a month of eating foods high in vitamin D. Even so, any food that does have a large amount of vitamin D will have a correspondingly high amount of vitamin A, which negates it. If you're deficient in vitamin D, you have to balance your fat-soluble vitamin stores, which means you need to ingest or get vitamin D from the sun without getting the other fat-soluble vitamins. Yeah, I've seen some pretty ridiculous things like people saying, oh, well, I eat 10 raw eggs a day and I get my vitamin D from those, or I ate one tablespoon of pork lard and got 5,000 IU of vitamin. This is completely ridiculous, guys. These are all lies. I think there's like a hidden agenda to some of these diets that don't actually want people to be healthy. So here I made a list of the top vitamin D food just for comparison. And one thing worth mentioning is vitamin D2 versus vitamin D3, which is the form of vitamin D that occurs in plants versus the form that occurs in animal foods. And the former is not really available, not really active. But again, this whole thing to me is not really relevant because it's not important. You know, you're supposed to be out in the sun. So cod liver oil, trout, salmon, milk, sardines. After the fish, it kind of falls off really hard, and that's because the diet of the wild fish, the algae that's like on the top of the ocean in the sun, is naturally very, very high in vitamin D. And in comparison, the rest of this stuff, conventional land animals, factory farms, aren't really out in the sun, and even if they were, their diet isn't really adequate to metabolize the vitamin D well and have healthy meat. So, you know, if your chickens were out on pasture, if the cows were out in the sun, if the pork, would it be higher in vitamin D? Yeah. Would the meat be a lot healthier? That's more important. Much higher in minerals, you know. We're not worried about vitamin D from animal foods. We're getting it from the sun. You know, some people try to make that argument, oh, my meat is so much healthier, it was never frozen, it's raw. If that was the truth, someone would have tested their meat already and used it as a marketing gimmick. Oh, this is the highest vitamin D egg. Someone would have done it already, guys. Maybe I should try to do it. Now, what's pretty hypocritical is these people will be on the carnivore diet, on the Western Price diet, Raw Primal, whatever it is, and they'll still go with the RDA for vitamin D, which is like 600 IU. It's pathetically low. How can you flip-flop that much? You're going completely against the government, eating 15 eggs a day, but then you're going with the government's vitamin D recommendation? Come on, let's think a little bit here. Now, in regards to how much vitamin D we actually need, I did a video about a year ago now titled, How Much Vitamin D Do We Actually Get From The Sun? Definitely check that out. I go over how a person can get tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of units of vitamin D for just a few hours of sun exposure. Now, each of those foods as I said earlier, we'll have a corresponding amount of vitamin A. More vitamin D in the food means more vitamin A in the food. And the reason that vitamin A negates vitamin D is because vitamin A is used in healing tissue. It needs to be used up. More relevantly, your skin when it's damaged from the sun. So if you aren't out in the sun a lot, you aren't using up your vitamin A stores. And a few years of doing that will result in significant fat-soluble vitamin imbalances in the body. Uh, we spoke about magnesium being needed uh, over the past two weeks. That's very important as well. It's not just about the vitamins. So 
animal food increase in the diet, you also want to increase hunting activity. Basically, how would you have obtained these animal foods, which means prolonged full body sun exposure, you know, being out in a bathing suit for five, six, seven, eight, nine hours a day in the sun, and highly physically active. When you're walking 10 hours a day, when you're working out, when you're moving, when you're doing things, that's using up vitamin A and, and fat soluble vitamins. So if you just sit on a couch all day and eat uh, trout and cod oil and salmon all day, your body's basically just gonna be storing vitamins waiting to be used in these physical activities and you're never gonna end up using them and you're probably going to develop severe imbalances which can lead to organ and liver issues. So you also have to keep in mind that vitamin D supplements bypass the body's natural regulation. So Initially, if you're very deficient in vitamin D and you're not tanning in the sun, yeah, taking a supplement can help kickstart that and you definitely want to take it with uh, the synergistic ones, vitamin K2 and magnesium as well. But after you get to like a moderate level of vitamin D, you want to absolutely stop supplementing because when you're in the sun and your skin's darkening, your body's able to regulate that vitamin D that comes in and, and store whatever it needs. But if you're just dousing your stomach with like concentrated vitamin D supplements, it can get very bad and your levels can get very high and your body needs to use it up. The main difference between minerals and B vitamins versus fat soluble vitamins is that the former are much easier to remove from the body. When you're ingesting fat soluble vitamins, the body tends to want to hold on to them because they're sparse outside of our natural modern dietary context. So we do have to be mindful of that. So first you definitely want to stop all supplements. And then you want to get blood work to check your levels because if you get blood work now and then next year and the year after and your vitamin d levels are still really really high despite not taking vitamin d or getting that much sun that's an indicator that your body stores are very very high and you need to use them up magnesium vitamin k2 to balance definitely needed you know several hundred milligrams of magnesium same with uh, a few milligrams of k2 and then you want to lower your dietary fat soluble vitamins and let the body regulate. Uh, that's a big reason you guys see me eating this new diet and making fun of me for eating bread. Well, there's a reason behind it. You know, there's no real way to see how much vitamins are stored in your body without getting like a, a biopsy of your tissue. So it's easier to just even out the diet, make sure you're not getting any of this stuff, and then taper in supplements and see how you respond so you can isolate individual nutrients. So if you guys want some of that stuff, you can go to organsupplements.com as well as uh, support me through all of my other businesses on frank-stefano.com and hopefully I can continue to provide you guys with information as well as foods that will make you happy and healthy. As always, thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks again, guys, and I think that's it, so I will see you for the next video.